When I arrived in Somerville College in September of 1994, I was a cocky 13 year old with spiky hair and an earring. The mullet had gone out of fashion at this stage, but I fucking loved it, so I sported that with pride as well. At St Job's National School, I was known for causing shite, and had been suspended on at least four occasions. No doubt my reputation preceded me, as no sooner had I arrived in secondary school, than shit started up. Now I was excited about going to secondary school. The idea of not having the same cuntish teacher breathing down your neck all day made me think things would be freer. I also liked the idea of metalwork and woodwork, and even the science lab seemed like a place where interesting shit could happen. I suppose you could say I entered secondary school with an open mind, like I turned over a new leaf. On inauguration day, 190 13 year old boys were herded into the sports centre in anticipation of an awe inspiring speech to be given by the principal, a scrawny limp faced grey man called O'Hara. Of course, everyone chose to sit where they wanted, I chose the back, but as soon as I did so I was yanked from my spot and told to sit at the front. Now I don't embarrass easily, or at least I don't show that I embarrass easily. So. While this teacher was dragging me up to the top of the room, in front of people I had never met before in my life, I knew I had two options. I could meekly accept public humiliation, or I could act the bollocks. Of course, I chose the latter. So while this teacher, who reeked of silk-cut cigarettes and coffee breath, was dragging me to the top of the room, I flailed every limb of my body as if I had cerebral palsy and suffered from severe spasticity. There, 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 I said. I can make it on my own, you know. I'm not a spastic. The whole room burst into the most wonderful laughter you could imagine. The teacher went red in the face and got angrier and angrier. As soon as I was allotted my new space directly under the watchful eye of O'Hara, the whole room burst into applause. So as not to be rude, I stood up and gave a spastic clap. That was enough to send the whole room into catatonic convulsions of laughter and put an end to any sense of decorum the principal had for his inauguration. O'Hara gave his spiel, a lot shorter than I'm sure he had intended, and sent us all off to our first class. I remember seeing a film called Dazed and Confused when I was about 18. I told a story the last day of high school before the breakup for the summer holidays. In it, the older fuckers used to make cricket bats in woodwork class, and then bait the shite out of the younger fellas who were supposed to start school in September. Now the teachers didn't seem to mind this, and in fact it seemed to be like a rite of passage for the younger fuckers. The fact that all this was organised made it even more impressive. When you see things like that, it just confirms reckon as you have from a very early age. Anyway, at about 11 o'clock we were let out for break. I was surrounded by about 20 first years congratulating me on my comic genius at induction. We were standing under a tree at the end of the football pitch when all of a sudden we heard this almighty roar. First year frenzy! We all looked up and saw so about 40, 50 years running in our direction, screaming from the top of their lungs. We had no idea what was happening. We thought these feckin' Egypts were playing a game or something, until they got about 20 metres from us and we realised they were after us. We scarpered in all directions, playing what seemed to be the most important game of take of our lives. The whole football pitch turned into a version of a sort of 1920s football match, people running wildly in every direction. Now, I was a wily fucker when I was young. I was good at the old dodging and weaving. I used to love playing pig with me classmates and you know, it arched me back this way or I'd jump to the side. So it was with these 50 years. One gormless fucker called Morris Murray or Mongo as we used to call him decided to take me on. Now I knew who Mongo Murray was. 
He used to walk with his feet pointed inwards and laugh like a fucking donkey. <laughs> Definitely not a 17 year old who was easy to respect. Every time he got close to me, I'd swiftly arch me back and he'd miss me. I did this for about five minutes, slowly tiring him out. With every missed catch, I'd mock his goofy laugh. <laughs> of course, this infuriated him. You're fucking dead, Feeney, you cunt ya! He'd say in that dumb, inarticulate gob of his. Anyway, frustrated with his lack of success, he convinced a friend to catch me from behind, and he caught me then in a headlock, the king of dead end fights. So, in this apparent state of immobility, I couldn't get a good punch in. By now, the whole school was watching this spectacle, and all the fifth years had forgotten about the baitings they were supposed to be given the first years. But nobody was screaming or shouting. All I could hear were a couple of the fifth years shouting, Leave him the fuck alone, Mongo. He's only a lad. But Mongo didn't leave me alone. In fact, he kept pulling tighter and tighter around my neck. And at this stage, I started to choke. But nobody came to my rescue. No teachers intervened. Either they didn't see it, or they didn't give a flying fuck. Whether I was right or wrong, I genuinely thought I was going to die. The headlock brought me closer and closer to the ground, and now Mongo was on his knees. Without even thinking about it, I grabbed him by the balls and squeezed with as much energy as I could muster. His scream was horrific. Ah! He unhooked my neck and fell to the ground. But I didn't let go. In fact, I squeezed even harder and harder now that the oxygen was returning to my body and brain. And I screamed at him repeatedly. I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill you, you cunt! His screaming must have woken the Rip Van Winkles of the school. For suddenly, there were three teachers manhandling me, separating me from my prey, where they swiftly dragged me off to the principal's office. It was my fault that I hadn't accepted what secondary school had lined up for me. If I had, I wouldn't have squeezed Mongo by the balls, and what came next wouldn't have happened. <laughs>